Hello my sweet friends, welcome back. If you guys have been keeping up with my vlogs, you will have seen that we just recently moved, literally last week. And packing, moving, organizing, unpacking, all of those things have really just taken over my life over the past few weeks. And because of that, I feel like I just haven't had a lot of time to read or I haven't been prioritizing reading really. And today I woke up and I was like, I don't really have any plans today. I have a meeting and I think that's it. So why not use today to just completely dedicate to reading and do a 24 hour readathon? So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Once I like finish filming this clip, we'll see what the time is and we'll actually do the 24 hours from that time. I filmed a lot of 24 hour readathons. I'll link the playlist down below if I can remember. And I used to film them every month, but I haven't filmed one in a while. I just, I don't even know why. And I love filming them. So I'm excited to be filming one today, but I do usually use the timer method where I stop and start the timer and only count the time that I'm actually reading. But I think this time I'm just gonna be like, how much can I read in the next 24 hours? So from this time today to that time tomorrow, how much can I read? I am planning on sleeping. I'm gonna try and like stay up a little bit later. I'm not like the best at staying up, but we'll see what we can do. It's honestly a very rainy, dreary day at the moment, which I'm kind of hoping it might get a bit sunnier. I'd love to sit outside and read. We'll see how we go. It's gonna be a cozy day either way. As for what I'm currently reading and like in the middle of, I have one physical book and one Kindle book. So I'm reading the right move at the moment, but I'm like almost done. I'm at 83%, so I, I don't have much left on this one. But the other book that I have started is Escaping from Houdini, which is the third book in the Jack the Ripper series by Kerry Maniscalco. I am maybe, maybe a quarter of the way through, maybe a little bit less than a quarter of the way through. So I'd also love to obviously get through this. This series kind of follows two teenagers solving mysteries in the late 1800s and it's just so much fun honestly. I love it. And then after these, I don't know, I don't really have a set TBR. I would love to read something from my monthly TBR because it is the 11th of March today so we're a third of the way through the month and I have not read a single thing from my monthly TBR so we might try and prioritize that, but we'll see. I'm just gonna mood read my way through this 24 hour readathon and I guess I'll update you guys along the way. I think I'm gonna start with this one because it's just like what I'm in the mood for right now. I'm loving this series, I'm loving these books. I think they're so much fun. And so let's officially start this readathon. It is 8 11. So let's see how much I can read in 24 hours. <laughs> Getting close to the end, I'm up to chapter 37, which is page 380. So how many pages do I have left? Oh, not many. There's all these pictures at the back that I didn't realize. Okay, so I only have about 50 pages left. I didn't realize that this whole last bit of the book was all just... What is this? I'm so confused. Oh, read on for a sneak peek of the next book. Okay, well I only have 50 pages left and everything is going terribly. Everything has fallen apart. So I'm hoping that means that now that everything has fallen apart, things can start to get better because there's a romance that kind of started in the first book and has continued throughout this series so far. But in this book, things have taken a little bit of a turn. I guess you could say there's a little bit of a love triangle situation. And I am very passionately rooting for one specific love interest to be the love interest, you know, like to win, I guess. And I'm not sure what's going to happen. I think surely she's going to pick the person that I want her to pick. But I also am just like, she could be an idiot. She, I don't know. Come on, Wadsworth. You can do this. Pick the right man. I officially finished Escaping from Houdini and it was so good. I loved it so much. This series is just so much fun. I think it's four books total, so I only have one more to go and I'm genuinely sad about it because I just love these characters. I love hanging out with them. I feel like their banter and their little like flirty situation is just so much fun. This series is young adult historical mystery. It follows two teenagers who are forensic anthropologists. 
or something like that. They basically look at dead bodies and figure out how people died and they are somehow caught up in all of these mysteries and end up like kind of being almost like detectives I guess trying to figure out why these murders occurred, who the murderer is, all of the stuff like that. Each book in this series follows a different mystery and each mystery is solved by the end of each book so it's kind of like four different stories but they all kind of link together because it's the same characters or the same main characters in each book and in the first book you're kind of following the main characters in kind of like where they live in their hometown. The second book you follow them as they go to this like school that's like set in a castle where they're like learning to be better forensic anthropologists. So that one is set at a school in another country, I can't remember which one. Then at the end of that book they get on a boat to head to America and so this story is set on this big like cruise ship I guess. I think they included a picture of it which was very helpful because when they said boat I was not imagining like cruise ship. Yeah, so like one of these huge ships. So I kind of just imagined it in my brain, kind of set up like a cruise ship, like obviously everyone has their own little quarters and cabins. There's big dining rooms and like ball rooms. And on this ship, there is this carnival, which is so bizarre, but each evening of the cruise or of the trip, I guess, this carnival puts on a show. Unfortunately though, murders start occurring at the shows. And so obviously our main characters decide, hey, we want to figure out why these murders are happening, who the murderer is, and we also get some new characters, we get to follow their little plot lines. Obviously the big mystery thing is like the main focus but there's also like romance subplots, family dynamics, friendships, like it's just, it's really good. I love it so so much. So really enjoyed this. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I think the second book is still my favorite so far and I think I gave that one like 4.25 so. I don't think they're like the best books in the world, like they're not five star reads for me but I have so much fun reading them and I love the characters so it's always just like a fun time. I am a sucker for a YA mystery. I just love them. I think they're so fast paced, so fun and this like historical element it's perfect. I think now I might go to my Kindle and finish the right move because like I mentioned I think I'm like 80 something percent of the way through that so hopefully I'll get through that pretty quickly and we'll keep the momentum going. It did take me like over four hours to get through this. I did have a meeting at 10, which was only like 30 minutes. So it really didn't take that much time out of my day. And apart from that, I feel like I've been reading like literally the whole time. Even while I ate lunch, I was reading and I've tried to just, yeah not put this book down at all. Obviously a few tiny breaks here and there, but I've really been just like reading the whole time. It did take me longer than I thought it would to finish this book, which is a little bit sad, but also I want to be realistic with you guys. Like it took me like four hours to finish this book and I had already started it when we started this readathon. Like I'd already read like maybe a little over 20% of it, but it still took me like four hours to read like a 400 page book. I'm like happy with that, but at the same time, I just really thought I'd get like a bunch of books done, but that's just the reality of it, I guess. I'm not necessarily a super fast reader. I don't think I'm super slow, but yeah, I don't think I'm that fast. Like I think I'm probably average. I don't even know. I definitely don't read a book in a couple hours, but I also want to enjoy my book, you know, so I'm not going to just like skim it. Anyways, I'm going to keep reading and I should finish up the next book pretty quickly because we are pretty much done with it already. And then we can choose a new book. I don't know what I'm going to do, but first up, let's finish The Right Move. <laughs> I just finished The Right Move and this was so good. This is the third romance that I've read this month and it is like by far the best, like easily the best. I just feel like romance books, apart from Magnolia Parks, haven't really been hitting for me. I don't know, it's just like, I feel like I've been reading quite a few that are very like physical or like there's just this like immediate physical connection and I feel like it really like drives the romance. I need a much more like emotional, more, I don't want to say meaningful because obviously like different people like different things but I would much rather, sorry it's raining if you can hear that, I would much rather just yeah an emotional really sweet romance and this still was like quite spicy which is not my personal favorite, it's just like not why I read which is 
obviously again just personal preference but even though it did have more spice than I typically would go for it still had that like emotional really sweet side to it Ryan Shay like I finally understand why all the girls just are obsessed with him like I get it he's so sweet they talked a lot in this book about like quiet love about like quietly loving someone so like acts of service or leaving notes or just like following through with your promises just small things that aren't as obvious compared to like oh my gosh we have so much chemistry there's so much tension da, da, da. like it's much more oh he makes my favorite coffee for me every morning without me having to ask and he knows my dietary requirements and like adds extra things to his groceries even though he won't eat them just so that I have the things that I like like little things <sighs> I just love stuff like that. Also, the sign language. Oh my gosh. <sighs> so good. Really, really enjoyed this. I think I'm going to give it four stars because, again, it wasn't like my favorite book in the world, my favorite romance in the world, but it is definitely the best one I've read in a while. Apart from Magnolia Parks, I don't even know if that's really like romance, you know? I feel like for just like a classic romance, I haven't read a good one in a while. I could be forgetting something that I've read recently, but yeah, I really enjoyed The Right Move. And now... We're moving on to our third book. I mean, in saying that, obviously, that one that we just finished, I had like 15% left, so it wasn't, it wasn't, yeah, we didn't have much to read. And it is currently 1.25. Here is my TBR for the month. I have not read anything from my monthly TBR yet, so we have quite a few options. We literally have eight, because that's how many books I put on my... TBR at the start of each month. I don't want to do romance, so that immediately cuts out like three of our options. So we either have Babel, which is historical fantasy, is it? Good material, which is more like lit fic, chick lit type thing. Girl, Serpent, Thorn, The Final Empire, and Half a Soul, which are all fantasy. And I think I'm really leaning towards Half a Soul because I've been wanting to read this for so long. I've heard incredible things about it and it looks like a really great, oh my gosh, is this less than 300 pages? Oh, that's crazy. 200 and how many? Like 70? <gasps> I honestly don't even know what this book is about. On the back it says, it's difficult to find a husband in Regency England when you're a young lady with only half a soul. So she was cursed by a fairy. She has no sense of fear or embarrassment, which makes her prone to an accidental scandal. Oh my gosh, this sounds so fun. It's kind of giving that Regency Bridgerton vibe, but like fantasy elements to it. I've heard, I think this is quite cozy vibes. Oh my gosh. I actually cannot wait to read this. this looks so fun. Can she fall in love even with only half a soul? Enter the world of this enchanting debut historical fantasy where the only thing more meddlesome than fairies is a marriage minded mother. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Okay, well I'm just gonna start this and I guess we'll see how we go. It's now 4.55. I feel like every time I go to show you the time, you guys can't even see it. But it's 4.55. So it's been a few hours since I talked to you last. I've done some more reading. I ended up getting up to page 52. And then I was like, I have been reading a physical book all day. I really just want to take a break. And so I was like, I'll listen to an audiobook instead. Just to kind of switch it up so that I don't get like sick of reading, you know. But I will say, loving this so far. Obviously, I'm only 50 pages in, which is not that much but it's so much fun I feel like it's exactly what it is described on the back of the book like it's set in this Regency era we're following Dora who got cursed by a fairy and she has lost half her soul which means she doesn't feel embarrassment or like fear or like surprise or shock she doesn't really feel emotions the way normal people should but she also knows that she doesn't and so she'll try and kind of act like she knows what she's supposed to be feeling and act accordingly so that she's not standing out I guess but she knows that there's something a little bit different about her but also she's been told to not tell anyone that she's been cursed by a fairy apart from her very immediate family because I think it'll bring like a bad name to her family so she's not really allowed to tell people that's why she acts a little bit different but Dora and her cousin are of age to become wives I guess and so they have traveled to London to take part in this season and to meet a potential husband I guess but Dora has just met someone who doesn't really have a great reputation so 
we're kind of following that along and I think he wants to like help her get out of her curse but I could be wrong so we'll see but I love the way it's written it feels very atmospheric I'm seeing every single scene like a movie in my head it's just so beautifully written and I'm obsessed with it I also just love Dora she's really funny but as for my audiobook I decided to start listening to good material by Dolly Alderton I do have this physically as well but it just seemed like a good one to listen to on audio it's also on my TBR for March and I ended up listening to 33% of this so we're a third of the way through this it started off quite slow and I was a bit like eh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna like this but the more I've listened the more I'm enjoying it I think at the moment my favorite character is literally Morris who is our main character's elderly landlord and he's so weird but so funny like such a bizarre guy but he's just making it entertaining which I appreciate because apart from that it's just quite mundane but that's also the point so hopefully I continue to just like it more and more as the story goes on but of course I'll update you but now that it's around five I think I'm gonna go have a shower and probably start cooking dinner so I'll probably listen to more of this audiobook while I cook but I'll update you with some more reading updates later <laughs> It's 8 p.m. and I'm gonna go back to reading Half a Soul. I did take a little bit of a break to cook dinner, eat dinner, and then watch Survivor. I couldn't help it, I needed to. I needed to watch Survivor, I couldn't miss it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <sighs> but I'm back to reading. Let's see how long I can stay awake. I'm not good at staying up late. I usually am asleep by like 9, 9.30, so I'm gonna stay awake as long as I can. And I'm hoping by like sitting downstairs on the couch rather than like reading in bed, I might be able to stay up a bit later. I'll obviously update you, but I'm actually really excited to get back into this. I've, I've been thinking about it since I put it down and have been looking forward to picking it back up again, which I just, I love it when I feel like that when I'm reading because you just know it's a good book if you're thinking about it when you're not reading. halfway I'm at page 150 and I'm loving this it's so good I think if you like Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies there's a good chance that you'll like this it gives me similar ish vibes this is a lot more like Regency-esque than Emily Wilde but I feel like the main character in Emily Wilde and the main character in Half a Soul kind of give similar vibes and this feels quite cozy that feels quite cozy there's the fairy element in emily wilde there's the fairy element in this one a bit of like a mystery going on like they give the same vibes they're definitely not like the same thing but i feel like it could be one of those scenes where it's like if you like one you may like the other obviously could be wrong but oh my gosh i'm obsessed like if you know any other books that kind of give this vibe a lot of people say this is like Howl's moving castle meets bridgerton I don't know anything about Howl's Moving Castle apart from that I've heard people say they really like it. Is it a book? Is it a movie? I don't really know what it is. If you think I'd enjoy it, let me know. Maybe I need to pick it up. But yeah, if you know anything that gives like the same vibe as this, I would love to know. It's also blurbed on the front by India Holton, who is the author of The Wisteria Society of Lady Scoundrels, which I have read and really enjoyed and also kind of gives similar vibes i would say the wisteria society of lady scoundrels is a little bit more ridiculous and a little bit more like rom com -y, heavy on the com but it does give like similarish vibes because it's like regency cozy fantasy-esque and i also need to continue that series actually now that i think of it because i've only read the first book and i know there's three anyways what's the time 9 40 I'm definitely starting to get tired. I don't really know like how to keep myself awake. I don't want to drink like an energy drink because I don't want to be awake till like 3 a.m. And apart from that, like I don't really know what I can do. I guess we'll just we'll just read until we cannot read any longer. I'd love to finish this tonight. Not sure if I can. I'll give it a red hot crack, you know what I'm saying? Like I assume this would take me another couple of hours to finish. I'm not sure if I'll last that long. We'll see, but this is shaping up to be a pretty highly rated book, I think. Good morning guys. 
guys just made myself my morning coffee it is 7 a.m so i have just over an hour left of this readathon because we started at 8 11 yesterday so we'll finish at 8 11 today i stayed up a little bit last night i stayed up to like a little after 11 maybe and i finished half a soul so good I'll talk about this a little bit later after the readathon is finished because I don't want to waste any time. And I also continued reading a little bit of good material. So this is what I'm going to continue with this morning. I'm definitely over halfway. I only have, I don't know, less than 100 pages left? Around 100 pages left? Yeah, roughly 100 pages left. I don't think I'll finish this in the next hour, but I guess I will update you at 8.11. It's actually now 9.30, so we're a little bit past our 8.11 cutoff, but we have finished our 24-hour readathon, and I just had so much fun. I'm honestly very happy with the amount that I read yesterday after I finished the first book. I was like, oh my gosh, it's taking me so much longer to read these books than I originally thought. Maybe I'm not going to get through that many. And then I was like, you know what? It doesn't really matter how many books I get through. I'm just here to have a good time, you know? And I had such a great time and I actually ended up reading more than I originally anticipated. So we finished three physical books and one Kindle book. So technically four, but also one of the books I had read 20% of, the other one I had read 85% of. So I'm gonna say like three books, really. And I wanna talk about them a little bit. By the way, I ended up going a little bit over the 24 hours, but I did end up finishing this book, which I'll talk about in a second. So the first first book that I finished was Escaping from Houdini. This was so much fun. I love this series. I gave this book four stars. The series is just the epitome of fun. It's fast paced. It's YA. It keeps you on your toes. I definitely don't guess like what's going to happen, but I also am not really trying to. Like I'm just there kind of like enjoying the ride. But yeah, I love this series. I can't wait to continue it. I'm so sad that I only have one book left and I'm really excited to see how the series ends. I'm hoping that the last book is kind of like a big... I don't know, just like a bit dramatic. And maybe we have a bit of like a, ooh, are they gonna end up together? Maybe a life or death situation potentially. I don't know. But I feel like surely there's gonna be something big. So love this series, really recommend. The second book that I finished was The Right Move, which I also rated four stars. That one is a sports romance about a basketball player and an air hostess. And that one was so cute and so sweet. I was really impressed by it, especially after Mile High. Mile High was just not my favorite. Favorite. I didn't hate it, hate it, but it just, it wasn't my favorite. I don't think I mentioned that, but I read Mile High like right before. I tried to read it, ooh, was it last year? I can't remember. I tried to read it at some other point, like at least a few months ago, and I ended up DNFing Mile High because the main character, he was just not my cup of tea, but everyone's like, keep reading it. He gets better. There's a lot of character development. And so I gave it a second chance and he does definitely have a lot of character development, but I just still think overall, Mile High was just like not my thing, which is fine. That's just like how romance books work. And I especially think if you don't click with the love interest or like with the characters it's really hard to enjoy a romance because the whole point is that you're like rooting for the characters and if you don't like them I liked Stevie. Anyway, not the point. I didn't love Mile High, so I was a bit skeptical going into the right move, but I was proven wrong. It was so sweet, so cute, so many acts of service. Ryan Shay, I really get it. I do. It still wasn't like perfect to me. It wasn't a five star read for me, but it's probably one of my favorite contemporary romances that I've read in a little while. Loved Indy, loved Ryan. Honestly, really enjoyed seeing the characters from Mile High as side characters. I think I prefer that, so really enjoyed. Then I picked up Half a Soul and this this was phenomenal. Absolutely loved this. I'm so glad. I was expecting to love it, to be honest, because I feel like all the people that I've seen talk about it, the way they describe it, it just sounded like something that was right up my alley. And I was not disappointed. I think I'm going to give this 4.5. Like, it was just chef's kiss so stunning. I kind of want to reread it already. It didn't give me that, like, five-star obsessed feeling, but it was one of those books where I'm like, I'm having such a great time. This is so much fun. I don't think I could, like, ask for anything more. Like, I don't think there's anything I would really critique. It's so short as well. Like, I'm so shocked at how much the author was able to get in with under 300 pages. Like, I'm shocked. I've had a look and I think this is part of a series, but I think the next book follows, like, the next generation of characters. Like, 
these characters kids or something i don't really know i like just had a brief look and i feel like if i'm remembering correctly i haven't heard incredible things about the next book like i feel like people are like oh it's good but it's just like not as good as half a soul so if you've read the second book or like i don't really know much about the series as a whole but if you've read other books in the series like let me know your thoughts i'll probably read it regardless because i just want to see more from this author but this is like cozy fantasy um regency era romance fantasy fairy curse trying to get out of it it was just a lot a lot a lot of fun so I'm so glad that i picked this up and then lastly i ended up finishing good material by dolly alderton and i don't really know quite what to think about this i definitely think i enjoyed it the more i read but overall i i just don't know how to feel it definitely wasn't like a five star but it also wasn't like a two star but like is it a three Three? Is it a four? I'm not really sure. I ended up being quite entertained by it, but it was also quite mundane and I was quite bored at the beginning and the main character was somewhat unlikable, but I think that was also part of the point. Also the end I thought was, oh, if you don't know what this book is about, because I don't think I ever explained. This is a, I would say like general fiction, chick lit type of book, just following a man after his four year relationship breaks down. So he gets dumped by his girlfriend that he thought he was going to spend the rest of his life with. And he is now dealing with the breakup of that and kind of just going through all of the different things that come along with a breakup. He's also 35 years old, which was just like different for me. I feel like I don't read a lot of books about people in their mid thirties, especially men. Like this was told from the guy's POV, which is very interesting because I feel like a lot of chick lit general fiction things are told from the woman's POV or at least like dual POV. And I will say one of the things that I loved about this book is that you go through the whole book reading from the guy's POV, Andy, and then right at the end you get like how many pages was it maybe like 30 ish pages 40 40 ish pages from the girl's pov and you get to see how she handled the breakup and like what was going through her head the entire time which was such a pleasant surprise i wasn't expecting to get her pov at the end and i loved reading how she was handling it and all of the emotions that she was going through and it was just fascinating it was really really well done i, I can definitely say that this book was extremely well written i love dolly alderton's writing but i think Think the actual like substance of it i can't tell whether i liked it or not obviously it's not super relatable to me which i do think hindered my reading experience i think if you're going through a breakup this could be a really great book to read i could be wrong but i i think again i'm not really sure but I, p p potentially and overall i just i thought it was really interesting i don't read a lot of this genre so like i i don't know like what to compare it to or what to say but i think it was good <laughs> But those are all the books that I ended up reading in this readathon. I had so much fun and I definitely want to do more of these in the future. Let me know if you want to see more of them because I think they're just a fun time. And let me know if you liked this kind of format where I just read for 24 hours rather than like timer. Do you prefer the timer method? Do you prefer the 24 hour period? I've also done like 12 hours, 12 hours, like 12 hours one day, 12 hours another day. Let me know what your thoughts are. I would love to know. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you all so much and I will see you in my next video very soon. Goodbye.